July 1st, people! My birthday month! And the day of the July soap release of all the birthday soaps! Per usual, I will go through very quickly all of the soaps that will be available tonight at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. Once again, this is the last time we're having the release on a Monday and at night. We're now going to switch it to a Saturday in the afternoon. Hopefully that will give you international people a little bit of wiggle room so that you could not have to stay up to like 3 a.m. And for all of you people that are just coming home from work, hopefully you'll be off on a Saturday. For the low tops, we have Pinata Party, Fairy Night, Anna Karenina, and the Great Pyramids, which might have another name. Kenny may pick another name. Whatever, it's the Egypt soap. And for high tops, we have Save the Sea Turtles, Rainbow Candies, which is the Skittles inspired soap, Birthday Cake, and Jungle Waters. Once again, all of those will be in the shop tonight, so set your alarms. We will have an Instagram reminder as well. You can click on that and it will automatically set an alarm to your phone, so that's a very helpful thing. And so, without further ado, let's go ahead and make that birthday cake soap that you can only see the top of, but the inside is actually super cool as well. So we're going to begin by pouring our lye water solution into our oils. Just gonna move my stick blender around in the oils first to make sure that there's no air bubbles caught underneath it. And then we're gonna pour this cooled lye water down the shaft of the stick blender and blend this on up until light trace. Okay, this soap batter looks perfect. It's nice and fluid and it's still holding together. And using this little digital scale that I got from Amazon, I'm gonna pour off one pound into here. And since our two accent colors are poured, we're gonna move off this big bucket and this little bucket to the side. And we're gonna work with just the first accent. So we're gonna start by doing a triangle design by tilting our molds to one side. So the first color that we're using is is Blue Tide from Mad Micah's. I'm gonna pour that into this container, wiping it out with the world's smallest spatula. This was sent to me by a lovely member of the Royal Court after I talked about needing a teeny tiny spatula. I didn't even know these existed. They sent it to my P.O. box and I have been forever grateful. I will leave you guys a link to them down below. And also, by the way, these cups that I'm using, these are made out of corn. They are 100% biodegradable and eco -free friendly and compostable. I will start by mixing this in with my scrapey scrapey spatula and then I will put in the fragrance oil, blend it up with a stick blender and we'll begin pouring it into our brambleberry molds. The fragrance oil we're using today is the sugared strawberry fragrance oil from our standard line. This is a super secret sauce fragrance oil blend that I developed years ago. Let's pour into our two Brambleberry molds. These molds are brand spanking new. They've never been used before. And to prop them up, I'm gonna use these two sample jars from Nurture Soap. Just gonna turn it on the side here. Gonna do the same to this one. And then I'm gonna pour this blue down the very side here in this crack. This is what's gonna make that lovely triangle shape. Gonna do the same over here. We're gonna make them even. I'm just gonna keep checking to make sure that they are in fact even. Gonna scrapey scrapey out my little cone. Tiny. All right, so now that this layer is in, I'm gonna set it off to the side and we're gonna mix up the next one. This next color is I Dream of Purple. This is another Mad Micah's color. It is the perfect shade of lavender. Had to do a purple because of the purple cupcake. Just gonna get this off my little spatula, wipe all the extra off of here. Here. Ooh, what a lovely shade of purple. No titanium dioxide in these. I want them to stay nice and vivid. I added the fragrance oil, so I'm gonna blend this up now. Fragrance oil blended in, let's pour it into the molds. Okay, so now I have taken the first layer off the block. I'm just gonna fill it in with the purple. Come over to this side and do the same. And I'd like this to be slightly, slightly angled, so I'm gonna prop this up now. And we're gonna scoot it off to the side. Now this next layer is going to be glorious because it's going to have hot pink and white. We are using Reborn Strong Pink. 
This is from TKB Trading. This is my favorite hot pink of all time. It does such a good job. I am actually gonna blend up these colors before adding the fragrance oil to them. I think all my unicorn lovers are gonna be really happy with this one. And then for this layer, I'm just gonna stir in the fragrance oil by hand, keep it nice and fluid for as long as possible. Then I'm gonna pour the pink in from up really high, make sure it gets down to the bottom. Then I'm gonna come a little closer and just put some right on the top here. And I am gonna scrape out the container and it's time to pour it into our molds. Now the molds I'm taking off of the two sample jars I had them sitting on since they're really, really stiff now. And then using my spatula to break the fall, I'm gently going to ladle in this next little bit. Oh shoot, I spilled on the brand new molds. I can't pour anymore, I have to fix that. Okay, next little bit. I'm gonna try not to spill on this one. Gosh, that always bothers me whenever I spill it. I like my molds to look as clean clean as possible. I'm one of those people that when I'm creating, I like my area to be virtually spotless. Like I am not a messy person in that capacity. You might find my laundry undone for two weeks, but gosh darn it, my workplace is gonna be clean. All right, so all of the base is in the mold. It smells so stinking good. So it is time to mix up the soap frosting. Alrighty, so our soap frosting has set up, and on the sides, I put some more of that lavender mica and some more hot pink colorant mixed with olive oil, so it's gonna make this really cool streaky pattern. I'm gonna begin by putting three across. It's gonna take a second for that color to come out, and that's just fine. It's gonna be mainly white. Here comes some of the pink, and now the rest of that purple. Alright, that looks amazing. It's gonna look really nice with the embeds that I have picked to go on top. And I will keep turning the piping bag so that most of the color is facing the outside. One good thing about adding color to the top of your soap in this manner is that whenever the person uses the bar, it's not gonna wash off. If you do a mica drizzle, that will wash off. This way, it won't, and it will be visible the whole time they're using the bar. I cannot believe that I am going to be 25 this year. That is so old. I do feel like I've done a lot in my 25 years. I've had a couple of friends turn 25 recently and start going through a bit of a quarter life crisis. I feel like I already did that. <laughs> I did that whenever I didn't know if I should continue like making soap or not, but I've had a lot of friends go through that recently and I just don't feel that way. I do feel like I've done such a lot in 25 years. I have two kids. I'm married. I have a business. I own a house. It's just a lot. I also feel like I'm just generally so busy I don't have a lot of time to think about like what am I doing? Where am I going? Like I've got too much to do to sit around and think that way. Which is honestly sometimes a blessing and it's sometimes a curse because being that busy can also just kind of wear you out. But I wouldn't trade it for anything. I think that also kind of has to go with having a big family. Having a big family just there's just not a lot of time to sit around and think. Everyone's busy. Everyone's doing something. There's all always a birthday party or something to celebrate. It's awesome. So what have I learned in my 25 years? I've learned a lot. I still have a lot to learn, but I feel like I have learned a lot. One of the things I've learned is life is way too short for you to try to be anyone but yourself. I know what it feels like to be the weirdo. Trust me, every time I go to a family reunion, I am definitely the strangest, most abnormal person in the room. I know what that feels like, but trying to spend your time being someone you're not is exhausting. It is not very rewarding and it'll just take it out of you. So be yourself. That is something I've learned. I've also learned that kindness and generosity really pays off. You're the one that's giving, but oftentimes you end up receiving as well. Ooh, I have a little more. I'll put a little more on top here. In business, I've learned you are allowed to say no. You are 
allowed to say no, whether that's to a proposal, a collab, um, maybe an inquiry for a wholesale order or private label, you're allowed to say no to that. If it's not a good time for you or your family, or you're just not connecting with maybe the other brand or person, you don't have to do that. And it can save you a lot of mental heartache. Also, if a brand, an organization, or an individual is taking advantage of you, get out. Get out of that situation. <laughs> All right, that is some of the most fun piping I have done in a while. So before it gets too hard, one of the additions we are adding in are these paper straws. I'm gonna stick it in on this side. The Purple Cupcake uses a lot of straws. She makes little like meringue lollipops. So she always starts by putting that straw right in the middle of it. I've also learned to take the high road in situations that might be uncomfortable or could simply turn into drama with hurt feelings, always take the high road. If the person's looking for an apology, apologize. If they're looking for a fight, simply walk away. If they're looking for sympathy, lend an ear. In my 25 years, I have learned who I am. I know what I am here in the world to do, and I know what I am striving for. And I don't always think about this, and I don't always think that <laughs> I'm 100% grounded in those truths, but deep down in my core, I know what I'm supposed to be doing. And I think that is such a blessing. I know not a lot of people and not everybody know what that feels like. I've learned that when it comes to art, do what makes you happy. Run against the grain <laughs> if you need to. Do something different. Do something that no one's done before if that's what you want to do. All right, with all the paper straws in, I'm going to go ahead and turn this around and we're gonna add some more embeds. We're gonna add some of these blue waffles and we're gonna add some of these little pink soap gumballs. I told Shelly, who is my embed maker, she's also my sister, and we are affectionately dubbing her the Empress of Embeds because she is by far the best person at making them. I told her I wanted some lighter and darker hot pink and she did the perfect colors. They will match this pink perfectly because she used the same colorant. I'm gonna start by putting in the waffles because they're the big one. I have learned that finding the balance between work and home life is a difficult but very necessary thing to do, especially if you own a small business because those of us who do, us entrepreneurs, tend to be workaholics if we don't watch ourselves. And all work and no play makes Jack a very dull boy. Ooh, I think I'm gonna put the little pink gumballs on the other side that seems to be where I have the most room for them. I have learned that dreams really do come true, that magic is 100% real. I learned that when I was very young, but have since been reminded of it multiple times, especially when I went to Disney World. I am convinced. I have learned that if you are uncomfortable with something that someone is saying or doing, that you should speak up and let them know, and to not be afraid of the repercussions. And that's just some of the things I've learned in 25 years. I've still got a lot to learn and a long way to go. Okay, this soap is looking fly. Let me just turn it slightly so y'all can see those waffles. And now for the part I've been waiting for. We are going to add vegan sprinkles. Look at this bag. It came in a hollow bag. I will leave you guys a link to these vegan sprinkles down below. I got the big birthday blend and we are going to add a generous amount all along the sides and there are so many different types of sprinkles in this blend including ones that look like little geodes like look at this it's like a little rock I'm gonna put him right on top right there okay with all the sprinkles on now it's time for glitter y'all didn't think I was leaving glitter off of this soap come on now we're gonna put some large biodegradable glitter on top I'm just gonna sprinkle it on the side Sides. It's gonna get on the embeds, it's gonna get on some of the sprinkles, on the top, on the side. Oh, it's gonna be great. Can't even finish my sentence. <laughs> it's gonna 
be so great. I'm also gonna take some gold digger glitter and I'm gonna sprinkle that on top. So we're gonna have some gold and silver glitter. And that gold is gonna tie right in with the straws that we used. Right on here. This gold digger glitter, by the way, is from Eco Stardust. They are a British company and I have to pay an absolute fortune to get it imported over here. But it is worth it because it is the best gold bio glitter I have come across yet. And now, very carefully, I'm gonna open up this bag of 24 karat gold gold leaf. Because of the delicacy of the gold leaf, I have removed my gloves. The only thing I am touching is the gold leaf itself and this application brush. You have to be very, very careful with this stuff because it's very dainty. I'm just gonna put it right here on these little waffles because that's what I've seen the purple cupcake do. Real gold leaf is very, very delicate. It will stick to anything it touches. Basically the first thing it touches is what it's sticking to. It's also expensive. If you're getting like a hundred huge sheets of it for 10 bucks, you're not getting real gold leaf. All right, with the gold leaf on, this soap is complete. Um, hello, happy birthday. <laughs> I am digging the look with the straws and all the everything. This looks so delicious. If it was a cake, I would totally eat it. So we're gonna let this sit for 18 to 24 hours. Then we will come back and we will chop up all of these bars after this quick commercial break. We are back to cut the birthday cake soap. Also, I don't think I ever told you guys why exactly I picked to use strawberry fragrance oil for this. I picked it because strawberry cake was my favorite growing up. That's the one that I picked the most often whenever my mom let me pick my cake flavor. Strawberry cake and vanilla icing was my jam. Okay, so I've turned it on its side. I'm gonna press down with a Vangeline. Gonna pull one out of the middle here. And this is what it looks like on the inside. I am dead. Look at that. When all was said and done, this does remind me of the Purple Cupcake Instagram. I'm so happy because her stuff is just so fantastic. And of course, the little gold leaf. The little gold leaf really makes it. Also, it smells so good. And look at the sprinkles. Oh, I just love it. Maybe I will try to make my actual birthday cake look something similar to this. By the way, my birthday is July 26th, but we have to make all of our soaps in advance because there's a cure time on them, which means just the time that the soap has to form its chemical structure and release all the water. It's what makes the the bar is nice and hard. So all of the soap making videos that I do for soap releases are filmed far, far in advance. Sometimes up to two months in advance of when you guys see them on YouTube. So yes, I'm making my birthday soap in a month that is not even my birthday month. <laughs> okay, so the question of the day is, do you buy your cake at a store or do you make it from scratch at your house for your birthday? Like I said before, or my mom always made ours from scratch, but I had lots of friends whose parents had like a favorite bakery they liked to go to. So let me know by clicking the eye in the upper right hand corner of the screen. I will be interested to see what you guys say, especially those people from other countries. Like what do you guys do for your birthday cakes over there? I wanna know. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, leave us a comment down below. If you are watching this after the release has gone live and have snagged some goodies, also tell us those in the comments below. We're really curious to see which ones you guys are really going to dig from this month because there were a lot that Kenny and I were like, this is going to be great. They're going to love this one. They're going to love this one. They're going to love this one. We want to know which ones you actually like. <laughs> Make sure you do something fun for yourself today, whether that is going out and eating a little bit of birthday cake, even if it isn't your birthday. Or buying yourself a little present somewhere. A little tiny thing. It could be a pencil. I don't care. Get yourself a little present. See there? You'll have a little cake. A little present. It's happy, happy on birthday. <laughs> and if July 26th happens to be your birthday, which is my birthday, early happy birthday. <laughs> and happy birthday all July babies as well. Anyway, I've detained you long enough. Please go about and enjoy the rest of your day. We will be back on Wednesday with the next 
soapy month. I cannot believe it. It just, oh, summer is just whizzing right by. And if you are a Royal VIP member, you will already know what Wednesday's theme is going to be. You can sign up to be a VIP down in the, you know, description box below, you know. Okay, for real though, I'm done talking. I'm done talking this time. Have a marvelous day. I will see you guys soon and bye for now.